What up, YouTube? It's your boy, RDS, and let's go! Oh, what I'm about to get into is something that's very, very, very important when it comes to history, when it comes to bringing us together, and this man I'm about to talk about and actually watch a live video was one of the most important men in history. He was very influential. He was very passionate. He was a great father. He was a great husband. He was a great politician. And he was one of those individuals that did not care about the outcome. He was going to make sure that he was heard. Even if he had to get locked up for it, even if he had to get beaten for it, he still did what he had to do to make sure that his point got across, that he, I guess, did what he had to do in order for me and everyone else to be doing what we're doing today. And I did not see this version. I did not see the live version of his speech, but I am looking forward to this. And the reason I'm uh, using this calm manner because you have to respect the fact that what this man has done. So I'm not trying to be loud. I'm not trying to be, you know, disrespectful in any way. I just want to make sure that I have everyone's full attention when it comes to this, because this is very, very important. It's the Martin Luther King, I have a dream speech. Like I say, I have never seen this. I've heard the speech, but I've never seen the live version of it. So without further ado, let's get into this speech. Dr. Martin Luther King, they are. I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. 100 years later, the life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. One hundred years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners 
Will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood? I have a dream that one day, even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream. My poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream. I have a dream that one day down in Alabama with its vicious racism, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and notification. One day right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. dream that one day every valley shall be exalted. And every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the flesh shall see it together. This is our hope. This is a faith that I go back to the south with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discourse of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. This will be the day when all of God's children will be able to sing with new meaning, My Country Tears of Thee. Sweet land of liberty of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. And so let freedom ring. From the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire, let freedom reign. From the mighty mountains of New York, let freedom reign. From the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania, let freedom reign. From the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado, let freedom reign. From the curvaceous slopes of California, but not only that, let freedom reign. From Stone Mountain of Georgia, let freedom reign from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi. From every mountainside. Let freedom ring. When we allow freedom ring. When we let it ring from every village and every hamlet. From every state and every city. We will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Oh, man. Some serious stuff there. You know, when I heard that they took out the Pledge of Allegiance in schools, which I do not understand why they took that out, because that is a very important part of history, words that said in that Pledge of Allegiance. So I never agree with that. And as far as like uh, what he said about we all should unite as one. Black, whites, 
I mean, everyone around the world. Uniting as one doesn't mean if something goes wrong, like what happened with the George Floyd. And he meant we need to come together as one, not come together and loot and riot and do all that stupid shit. That is not what Martin Luther King meant. And it's so embarrassing when you see that. If that man was alive right now and seeing what happens, what escalates when things don't, doesn't go as planned, he will probably, I'm pretty sure he's rolling in this grave right now because of how we are acting. And we, the reason I say we is all of us. We're all one, like he said, everyone. We're all one. We come from one person, God. So it's an embarrassment because that man fought, fought, and fought. And the way certain individuals carry themselves today and how disrespectful they are to this country, to the flag, to what Martin Luther King represented, it's an embarrassment. And there are a lot of other great politicians out there, but I'm just talking about Martin Luther King right now. It's just so sad. But like I say, he's a very important figure, and he will never be forgotten. And that was a powerful, powerful, powerful speech. <sighs> I just wish more people can embrace that speech has embraced the I don't know it's just it's an embarrassment but thank you all for tuning in and hit me up in the comments and let me know what you think about that speech and it just don't have to be about his speech it can be about anything when it comes to this country the way it's ran the way we act as one and until next time, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And thank you for tuning in. Peace, love, and deuces.